Heavy rain quickly flooded parts of the area and some places crews in boats were out rescuing people and in one case a system installed to protect drivers instead put them in harm's way. We are in Bullskin Township right now. Breakneck it goes underneath that bridge, but that bridge was underwater last night. And to give you an idea, the water sweeps through here. Take a look at this garage, how it pushed out the door, as well as what it did to these two cars that were absolutely swamped. And this is just a snapshot of what occurred around here. When floodwaters come, it's not personal, but the impact is. These people have lost everything. They have lost everything. The speed of what happened here last night is hard to comprehend. We saw the, this getting high, but then I turned around and looked, and the water was just rolling this way. So out the back door, Glenn and Shelly Sipple went. No time to grab anything. And when they came back, their cars had been swept away, and the house... It's a one-story house on a slab with water inside up there, and everything's covered in mud. It's ruined. Throughout the Dutch bottoms of Connellsville, Mont's Creek left behind a story of total loss. We have about 29 homes that are in this vicinity. They're, they're, they know definitely 10 are gone. Um, Pima's going through right now. They feel, they feel that probably all 29 are going to be uh, total loss. Only one homeowner had flood insurance. Good luck. Pima is going house to house, tallying the damage as families carried out whatever they could salvage and a backhoe gobbled up the rest. Lori Shaw found it hard to watch the muddied children in the neighborhood and made a handwritten list of needs. Shirts, pants, shoes. Probably going to grab a couple book bags, backpacks. Their school was closed today. Who's um, going to pay for this? I, I am. I am. Meanwhile, in Bullskin Township, roads and bridges were washed out as the rush of water did to property the seemingly impossible. I've been in a fire company 50 years and I have never seen the water this deep. The chief estimates five to seven feet of water washed down Breakneck Road, wreaking havoc without discrimination. We've probably got about, I'd say maybe 60 homes up through here that's damaged. And the area is without the water it needs to clean up due to a water main that was washed out in the deluge. The damage caused by the flood on August 28, 2016 was terrible. However, the response by the community and friends of the community was inspiring. As a result of the flood, 255 homes were damaged, 60 homes received major damage, and 31 homes are considered to be destroyed. The estimated total loss is more than $8 million, including homes, buildings, and personal property. This number, however, does not include commercial and public property. Fortunately, there was no loss of life or serious injuries. We are here along Route 119 right near Buttermore Road, and I can tell you Pendon is getting ready to reopen Route 119 in this area northbound any minute now. But I want to show you, do you see that Dodge car that is just sunk in mud right now? If you think that is something, just wait and see what else we saw today on the other side of this hillside in Breakneck. You know, kid? Fuel, oil, kerosene everywhere. Total loss, I believe. Monday was spent cleaning up as certain bridges were in danger of collapsing as cars suspended next to them. Pima's in here right now. Uh, they're going door to door uh, at the homes that they felt were flood damaged. Despite the devastation, spirits weren't broken. So I work and take care of others, and I know somebody's going to help me. <laughs> Blessing from God. I'm hoping. This is one of the areas hardest hit, easy to see why. If you walk with me, you can see and it's a little muddy, so a little bit slippery here. This is what folks are dealing with. Three feet of water came up to this line right here. And if it, you actually walk with me a little bit further, that shed over there has actually traveled, just to give you an idea of just how severe the flooding is, traveled all the way down the street. And it's right now just a gray spot. If we follow me over this way, Dave, our photographer zooms in a little bit. You'll see that gray shed back there. That's how far it traveled. The flooding, the devastation here, so devastating. So much cleanup, as you can see along this street. You see chairs, tree branches, trees just sliced in half that fell along this sidewalk here. And one of the folks who lives in this home, 15 year old Brandon, and Brandon, if you'll actually step in the shot now, tell us, you look around now, you see what happened in your home. What goes through your mind now? Well, 
Can't live here no more. That's it. Sucks. I like this place. Can't live here no more though. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you. Can you see that? That is a Toyota Tundra pickup truck, and it was just tossed, just tossed in these floodwaters. I mean, that's incredible. And this is what you're looking at in Breakneck. If you thought it was bad over in Bullskin, this was even worse. Here's another vehicle just tossed alongside the road. You can see that's. Dave Corley, photojournalist, getting some pictures for us. You can see the road collapse in certain areas, asphalt breaking apart. Right now, I'm on Breakneck Road near Martin's Auto Wreckers, if you're familiar with this area, and it's Breakneck Creek that runs behind here. It's the same creek that runs into Bullskin. Let me tell you see this, folks. That is just incredible. The force of the floodwaters that ripped through here, taking that truck lifting it up and just suspending it on the side of this hill and then as you walk just a few steps farther there's a PT cruiser face down just hanging above this creek by some trees there's some trees are the only thing keeping it still above and I even have to be careful on this bridge because the firefighters told us as we were driving in be careful on this bridge because they think it's gonna collapse but I mean, it, it's it, the pictures just speak for themselves. I don't even really have to say anything. The day following the flood, Connellsville Area Community Ministries was asked to serve as the fiscal agent for the flood relief fund. Donations began pouring in from all over the country. The response was amazing. Over $700,000 was donated to the flood relief fund to help with recovery plus an additional $250,000 from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. With this amazing response, it was apparent that administering the distribution of funds was going to be a huge task. Connellsville Area Community Ministries reached out to their ministry partners in the community and formed a flood recovery committee to manage and distribute the funds. This committee is comprised of representatives from Connellsville Area Community Ministries, Connellsville Salvation Army Service Center, and the Holy Trinity Conference of St. Vincent de Paul Society. In addition to the ministry partners, each municipality affected, the city of Connellsville, Bullskin Township, and Connellsville Township, appointed a representative to serve on the committee. The role of this committee was to be good stewards of the donated funds and to ensure they are used to help with flood recovery in the best way possible and serve as many people as possible. This committee was only part of the long-term recovery process. Daily management of the flood recovery was provided by a team of dedicated servants who staffed the Flood Recovery Center. The United Methodist Church through UMCOR provided nearly $100,000 to fund the administration and training of the staff to manage the flood recovery. Together, the Flood Recovery Committee and the Flood Recovery Center staff and volunteers work to help the flood victims to become flood survivors. In addition to help provided by the Flood Relief Fund, we were blessed with the assistance of many organizations that have reached out and provided assistance to the flood survivors. The American Red Cross and the Salvation Army were on the scene along with first responders to provide initial care to those impacted. As the cleanup began, we witnessed many churches and their denominations sending work teams, supplies, and prayers to assist with the huge task of recovery. Catholic Charities assisted 61 families with the replacement of 40 furnaces and air conditioners, 17 furnace repairs, 18 hot water tanks, and two oil tanks for an investment of $185,000 $373.55. These numbers are more than just numbers. They represent lives changed and people helped. Here are the stories of those who were helped and how the efforts and donations made a difference in their lives. So we are here tonight with Elda Thompson. And Elda, you are from Connellsville, right? Yes. So tell me about the night of the flood. Where were you? Where it was? Yeah. I was at my daughter's for a birthday party. Yeah. So it was your birthday? Yes. Yeah. Two days afterwards. Wow. Wow. And so when all of the rain started, were you, did you guys see the rain at your daughter's house? Did you know oh, what was yes. happening? Oh, yes. The 
clap of thunder and lightning. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. And then you tried to come home that night, right? Mm -hmm. But you weren't able to get home. No, no. We ran all over the country to get home. Yeah. We had to go back and stay all night there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the next day when you came home, um, next what's morning. The, the next morning, what did you see? Oh, it was just rocks and stones and sand and water and roads washed out and people just bewildered. They just stood there. Yeah. You just, you couldn't make it. It couldn't make any sense of it, you know. It was such a shock. Yeah. yeah. So what uh, was the damage like at your house? Hmm? What was the damage like at your house? Oh, it, uh, it uh, hit my house on the one corner and just wrapped around in big boulders and, and big pieces of log, or logs and uh, tires. It was tires and tires and more tires. Wow. And uh, in my basement, when they cleaned the sand out, they found uh, crabs and fish. Wow. And they had just shoveled the sand out. It was so deep. Wow. So did you have a lot of things in your basement, a lot of memories? Oh, yes, because I don't have an attic, so everything that meant, a lot of things that meant something to me, I kept in the basement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some was my mother, some was my mother-in-law's. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And so tell me, what was recovery like at your house? What was it like getting everything fixed and, and all the work that went into it? Oh, the people's, I couldn't believe I know it must have been about two weeks that uh, my yard and my house was just full of people coming to help. Wow. Just full of people. Yeah. yeah. And you said that even just this past week someone was out working on, what, what was it outside that they were doing? It's a, uh, where the flood hit my house, it uh, moved the, broke the seal between the wall and mm -hmm. the floor, and okay. uh, I was going to clean it up while I could see it was damp, so there was no use cleaning it up till I got that fixed. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine, I, I called him for a plumber, and he came to the door. He said, I'm your plumber, and uh, he sealed it, and then he painted up the wall, and he said it needs another coat, but he had work to do, and, mm -hmm. but he would be back. Wow, wow. He's a good friend. That's good. Something that I've noticed just through this tragedy is how much the community of Connellsville just kind of came together to help everyone. Um, did you, have you lived in Connellsville your whole life? What is it? Have you lived here your whole life? My mother and dad, Merritt Manor was my home. Okay. So my mother and dad had the farm there and I was 10. And the creek, I, never did I see it like that, never. Yeah. Not ever. And it was, People that, um, there was a little girl who used to live across the creek from me. Her dad brought me, and brought her over to see me. And she's grown up and in high school now, and, but she wanted to see where I, and he wanted to see if I was all right, if I needed anything. And I hadn't seen them in years. Wow. Uh-huh. It's amazing how a small community like this can just kind of come together in, in a moment when everything seems so horrible and so oh, hard. Oh, it shows you what people are made of. Yeah, it does. It does. And there was always, through everything, such a positive outlook oh, throughout yeah. Connellsville and mm -hmm. just appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, so you had a case manager, right? Someone who worked specifically with you? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what was that process like? What, did, what happened if you needed something or you needed help? All I had to do was call and somebody would come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that means a lot. That it means does. A lot. Yeah. But it, it's, um, you know, it's basically what's in somebody's heart that they want to help. Yeah. And my house, I, I couldn't answer the phone because there were so many people come in to see me. Yeah. I couldn't hear. Yeah. People yeah. care. People care. People yeah. care. It's a good thing. God bless this your community center. We are here now with Jennifer and her son Declan, and Ronan's actually running around. He might come in in a minute. So Jennifer, yeah. I heard that you mainly were helping your mom and your brother. Right, yes. So they live out on Breakneck? 606 Breakneck. 
And what was the damage like at their house? Uh, the biggest part of the damage was they lost the bridge. So to get in and out of the property. Oh my goodness. So, so were they were they trapped in the property or what? Uh, how pretty, did that happen? Well, pretty much, yeah. My brother was able to get out because there is a back road that goes out onto Tanyard Hollow Road. But my mom's almost oh, 80. Hi. <laughs> yeah, thanks, oh, buddy. Mommy. Hi, buddy. Hi, my mommy. mom's almost 80, so there was no getting her in and out. And I think everyone's biggest concern was if they would need to get an ambulance or a fire truck back there. So that was... That was the biggest thing because when it took the bridge, the bridge was actually cemented in on both sides of the ground. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, I'll ride you on my foot. It was cemented in. There were two big I beams cemented in to cement blocks, and yeah. then we had railroad ties across it. So um, when the cars come washing down from Fat Martin's junkyard, one of the cars got stuck under our bridge, and like another half a car, and then like a 40 foot tree. Oh, and wow. by the time it was all over, a big I-beam was bent completely, you know, it was U-shaped, so. Yeah. And it had eroded the bank away, so it was now wider. The creek was now wider than it used to be. Yeah. And um, for the first time, I, I saw my brother stand there with that look on his face. Stop it. Hey, no, you don't want to hit your brother on TV, yeah, okay? Yeah, you don't want to get caught. No, you want evidence Dude, of it. Dude, there's evidence. He can show this to, like, everybody, okay? You got to be good. Come here, you want to sit with Ma? Bah. You want to sit with me? Bah. Okay. But um, for the first time, my brother's standing on the bank with this look on his face, and he said, Jennifer, I don't know how to fix this. I mean, wow. it, was, it was too far apart. Oh, good Lord. Too, so, too big of a gap. It was too big of a gap. He didn't, he was dumbfounded. He didn't know what to do. But yeah. luckily, we had Roy Thayer and Beth. Yeah. And they did know what to do. Yeah. So. so tell me a little bit about Beth. Who is she? Beth was our caseworker, and she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So she helped us with everything, every ounce of paperwork we had to fill out. Why are you hitting people today? Every, every paper that we had to fill out, she knew what to do, yeah. helped us fill it out. And she was just awesome. She knew everything as far as we were concerned yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we knew nothing. We didn't know how to get help for this. We didn't know what to do about it. I'm going to leave him here with you when this is all over. <laughs> you're going to have five sons. Five sons, huh? Yeah. You. Yeah, you. you. Yeah, so you. is the bridge you. fixed now? Bridge is fixed. You. Wow. And how did that happen? Donations. Her and Beth and Roy Thayer made it happen. Wow. So brand new bridge in there. We got it from, I believe they were called Lane Enterprises through, through donation money. And um, yeah, big fancy bridge. We've had the cricks come up a few times since then, and we weren't even scared a little bit. Well, that's good. That's good. And now everybody knows your mom's okay. Yep. She can. She is good. She can everybody. get in and out of there. Good. Of course, she only makes trips to Gilmore's, but she's back in action. Which so, that's important. Yeah. That's yeah. important. Oh, it's not Gilmore's anymore. I'm sorry. It's Breakneck Market now. But, Breakneck um, Market. Still, she's in and out. She's good to go. Good. Good. So, and, and what was this experience like for you? It was terrifying at first, but um, it, it got easier. So, through the help of, you know, good people like Beth and Roy. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Well, I was glad to come down and do it. Oh, no. It's okay. That's what having babies will do to you. Don't yeah. ever have any babies. <laughs> It'll make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was glad to come down and do it. Yeah. So, because Beth, Beth is awesome. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, yeah, it was my pleasure. Good. Right. Thank you. Okay. Are we up? Listen, can you turn around and say thanks, Beth? <gasps> Did you know Miss Beth? Did you make friends with her? Can oh. you say thank you, Beth? Look up there. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Hey, what about you? Ronan. Can Ronan. You Ronan. <laughs> hey, Mr. Paw Patrol. Can you look up there and say thank you? Say thank you. Mama. What? Thank you. I see the baby. Yeah. Can you look at the camera? Look right there. That's a toy. Say thank you. That's a toy. Yeah. Thank you. We are here with Sue and Fred Sandusky, and you guys are from Connellsville? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so tell me about your experience with the flood. Well, uh, we lived at 401 Conway Avenue, which was uh, catty cornered from Johnny Woodruff Ballpark. We lived there 36 years. The flood of August 28th, we lived down there. We've seen other floods. This was like unlike anything that we were that we experienced. End up losing the the house because 
the foundation. They said it was not repairable. Three vehicles. So we tried to move the one thinking it was safe. By the time I parked the car and walked maybe 70 feet, it went from ankle deep up to the knee. And that's probably a matter of two minutes. So wow. we never seen if the water raise that fast down there. Our privacy fence, we don't know where it ended up at, <laughs> but we found our Amish sheds on watching TV. You got to watch them float we down? We watched them. They went down by the Major League ball field. Oh, wow. So that's where we saw We located them down there. Uh, they made it. So That was on Channel 4 News. Yes. We saw that they were down there. So. And even through the efforts there, uh, we were able to bring them back, set them on the property until we were able to get them over to the west side where we're living now on Ninth Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was, what was it like that night for you? Well, the first thing I said whenever the water started coming in, I said, you better get a towel. <laughs> he said, I don't think that's going to work. So. <laughs> A really, really big one. <laughs> when it started coming in the back, mm. uh, and then when I realized it was coming, and then the door cracked, our back door cracked. It was starting to crack. the deadbolt. And then we just had to hold the door shut so we wouldn't let out. But he held the door and I got the animals, secured them, and started raising everything up high because mm -hmm. we knew I knew that it was uh, getting bad. Never did that before. And Think just watched stuff flow through the house as the water kept coming higher and higher. Everything gone. What was the recovery process like for you? Uh, oh, that's a good question. It's a loaded uh, because question. Because it's, it's still yeah. ongoing. I have to get over the shock of the initial shock. Yeah. Which is probably three months, three or four months. And even at that, you still wonder if you were still there. Because yeah. we had good neighbors down there. And that's the, the sad thing. That whole neighborhood, There's it, there was good people down there. And that's what we're going to miss, miss the most. But, uh, but then once we did buy our new new forever home, new be the forever last one. Home, yeah. uh, once we did buy that, then we were able to get uh, assistance, and we got a bathroom installed on the first floor. And nice. <laughs> that is nice. That's we have one on the third floor in the basement, but nothing on the first. <laughs> <laughs> then they also arranged to be able to uh, put our washer and dryer on the first floor too and that little alcove we have and that rest the bathroom Gus is really pleased with that's his favorite room anymore so yeah so who's Gus that's Gus Mr. Gus oh, over Mr. there Gus, Mr. The grandson. Grandson. Yeah. do you want to come say hi you, you don't have hi. to it's really okay you can say hi Gus stays with us yeah well, but he wasn't with us the night of the flood thank goodness thank god that's okay yeah. That was probably the saddest part when we were walking through. There was no through. time to be afraid. There wasn't any time to be afraid. You're right. Everything was destroyed. I know. Everything. Yep. And I know the first time he went through it, because he's been, we've been watching him down there probably, well, since he's more or less an infant. And the hardest thing was going through the house with him. Yeah. And he says, I can't believe I grew up here and it's gone. And it Breaks your heart, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, if it wasn't for the floods, flood center, and especially Amy mm -hmm. and Misty. All the volunteers that have really, really given a lot of time you know, to, to help us. We really appreciate it. Because yeah. we're not able to do up and down on the ladders. And, you know, to be able to do all the painting, to do all the clean, the things that really need to be done mm -hmm. to make it 
suitable for us at our age. Yeah. You know, they, they were re they're really good about that. We just really appreciate it. And uh, they checked every week. Um, what, can, what, what can we do for you? What can we do for you? Josie still calls every yeah. week. Yeah, she does. Still calls every mm -hmm. week, wow. And uh, I said, you guys, I think, have done enough for us. And they said, no, no, no. So there hasn't been a lack of love and concern on their part. And I just love those girls up there. Yeah. I took care of you guys. I so appreciate that it wasn't a cookie cutter solution for every family and no, this everybody is, needed something different. You needed something different. You needed mm -hmm. a bathroom on the main floor. Mm -hmm. You needed the laundry on the main floor. And yeah. it wasn't well that's it wasn't not everyone got the same thing. Everyone got what they needed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They yeah. even su supplied the, the uh, volunteer work to move our shed, our Christmas shed, we refer to it, to place it on uh, a base that, uh, rock base, mm -hmm. stone base. Uh, one of the churches, I forget which one it was now. <sighs> There's been so many churches coming in and helping out. It's just how they designated resources for these different volunteers coming in. It's just, you think a town like Quantisville wouldn't be geared up. They did a fantastic job. Yeah. And uh, just all the organizations, uh, UMCOR, it just, I'm humbled by their efforts. Yes. It's, it's, they're, yeah. But like she said, we're established in our for a new forever home now. Yes, we took the base off of our new TV. <laughs> we didn't take the base off for a long time. It was our inside joke. In case we have to leave real quick, we'll be able to take it and go again. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a minute to, to trail with you, but I got you now. So now we are The base out. is off. Yes, you we guys took, are we in. Took, well, yeah. Yeah. We took the base they, off the TV. <laughs> yeah, it's just been. Inside it's joke. It's an experience you don't want to go through, but. If you had to go through it, you couldn't ask for a yeah. kinder group of people that just went up the best of it. above and beyond. 